are in the world, all of us are looking for love. We all want peace and we all want to know the truth. So that was my most recent theme. Mona Lucero, the name just rolls off your tongue. My name is Kylie Klein. We started talking and we instantly hit it off and she said she would take me on as an intern. There's two things that are happening in any creation. I think there's the inspiration and the art of it, and then there's the craft and the skill, the technique that goes into a design. I love that color on you. Oh, thank you. That yeah. looks great. What do you mean I'm not a bear? I have all the qualifications. <laughs> she's got a soft confidence that she's always smiling and she's always someone that's really infectious. You really want to smile with her, you want to join in, you want to know what she's wearing and where she got it. Odds are she made it. Sometimes we'd just be talking, she'd explain that a lot of her inspiration comes from the fact that she wasn't always like, ooh, I want to do fashion, oh, I'm a fashion designer. She was an artist. So I have a background in sculpture and painting of an art background. So I'm used to looking at a body in a 3D kind of way. There are two different ways. You can do flat pattern or you can drape and I love to drape because as you go around the body, particularly the female form, there's so many curves and different spots that are really beautiful. And when you're draping, you find these places that are unexpected that enhance the beauty of the female form. Back area and hips, it's all about the proportions and how they come together. But I like the organic feeling of just letting it happen and rather than worrying about like making sure every little thing is measured. When you start to measure things, it starts to lose the spirit of the piece. Right, so she's known for like red lips, she's got really bright, very feminine patterns, and they're very whimsical. I'm Viola, I'm a burlesque performer from Colorado. I first met Mona when I was working at this little tequila bar. They did a casting for an event. So I'd go over to her house the very first time. I'd never modeled. I really didn't know anything about the art scene in Denver. I was brand new here. And Mona was so kind and so warm and so welcoming. And probably what would have been 20 minute for a consultation for a fitting and all turned into about two hours for us. We just chit chatted. She let me try on all of her dresses. We just, we, we became fast friends. The first time I went to a retail space for Mona, I was so intrigued to actually see all of her work in one area where I could kind of flip through. Instead of seeing a certain style that she catered to, I was able to see the variety of what Mona is able to achieve. I had no idea how many handbags uh, she had made. So it was really nice to be able to see where her work started, where her passions were, just her artistry. This is where the magic happens. <laughs> but I need to basically pin on the dress and see how it's gonna fit. Closer fitting when it's all done. More body conscious. More like that. Well, I started using the butterfly in my logo quite a long time ago, 93 or something like that. What I love about butterflies is that there are so many different colors and patterns on them and even the shapes of the butterflies are so unique. Like they're just these super light things that just flit around and uh, of course then there's the metamorphosis and there's a lot of things that a butterfly signifies. She's definitely an art person first and then a fashion designer second so all of her stuff has such an artistic take on it that she told me to go further and that it's not all about like what's just pretty it's what's pretty but fashionable but artistic in this whole experience of style.
with some really wonderful photographers, but I don't always have the access I want to them. Especially since I started selling online, I, wanted, I needed to take my own photos or have the avail availability of being able to do it like that. Nice. They like that for a second. As a creative person, starting off in art, I, I see everything as the totality of creativity. Well, walk all the way over there and you'll start walking towards me and I'm going to be taking pictures of you as you come closer, okay? Bye. I like to portray everything that I'm interested in and uh, social media has helped me to do that. I, it's really exciting for me. I love it. Doesn't that look great? Yeah. I love that. Oh my god. I get to create my own world that everybody gets to see. I think social media is important because it's your own way of publishing. I love the ones where they're walking and they, they look like they're on their way somewhere. I think I have a pretty good eye in terms of composition and knowing what I want out of the models. It's something I think I'm pretty good at. This particular shoot is all about Instagram. We're trying to do something that feels like a, they're just on the street and they're walking around enjoying themselves and they're just two really hip, beautiful girls walking around and, you know, who doesn't want to feel like that, just feeling fabulous on the street. Just seeing what we come up with, we just get to play. I love this. <laughs> you get such snobby faces. <laughs> it's hilarious. Okay. Kinetic quality of fabric is very interesting. It's something that just recently I've probably become more aware of in my own designs. My last show, one of the themes was movement. And so what I wanted to do is have the models walking and you could see the movement of the dresses. And in fact, we included some fringy type of elements so that as they were walking, there would be this kind of movement that was very lighthearted and also sexy and fun. When fabric is moving on the body as, as you're wearing it, it just, there's something that feels really good about it. It's like clouds passing by or something like that. Older like man with the yeah. park with an umbrella with this you look. So they're starting off with their long straight hair and then they're doing these tendrils, which took them about an hour or so just on one model. And then they're gonna like cut um, comb it out so it's probably gonna be a big halo. It's gonna be cool, I think. Fashion shows are like weddings for designers. This is what I've always thought. So if you're like the bride at your wedding and you want everything to come off at the right time, like the doves take off at exactly, you know, at a certain time and then when they don't come off at, a, at that time, then you're upset and nobody else notices it. They're all like, oh my God, those doves were so amazing, you know, and you're like, but I spent so much time trying to make sure the doves were correct, you know, like it didn't work in your own mind. And so every show to some extent does that. But I have had shows where I was pretty happy. That's actually happening more in recent shows and I think that must mean that my craft is getting better. You catching me do the selfie? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 
let's see what's a good thing in French. Le chat. I love cats. They bring cat energy, cat attitude, cat heart, mm. cat courageousness, cat badass attitude. I love Kitty's sense of humor. Are you ready? What it is to be a professional kitty cat. That's what this is about. <laughs> you just go straight on. A um, little bit of a greased cheek. Uh -huh. Just whatever you put this. So there's always like an extra shape. Christopher Rydell and I started my business in 1993. He helps me with fashion shows and he helps set up my studios. He's very good about figuring out all that kind of stuff. So he's very practical, but he's also very creative. He pays attention to every detail and he always has my back. Like a captain kind of feeling. Yeah, yeah that would be amazing, wouldn't it's it? It's a typical print for a maxi dress. 307. Wow. If that's, that's the right one. I like that. Well, there was a lot of movement in looking at the design, but I wanted this to be able to get caught in the air, get caught in the breeze. The last couple of years, I've been doing a what I'm calling a fashion photo booth. Instead of having models come in and doing a fashion show, we would bring in people who were coming to visit the studio and have them model it. So have fun with actually, in, in a way, pretending or imitating models. And we get a lot of great photos from it. And I post those on Instagram. And it's, we've gotten some really good pictures, I think. And it's really fun because you see that these are real people and they can look very fashionable and beautiful and interesting. I've been so upset about everything that's been going on politically that I've been watching stuff on politics and hardly ever listening to music. And so today I was like, you need to start listening to some music again, you're going to lose your mind. There have been times during my life when something is not going right or, you know, I've, I'm feeling pretty down. And then I'll ask myself, what can I do to make myself feel a little bit better? Sometimes it's music, but generally it's the most important thing that I always have to come back to is my art. My art always lifts me up. It's the one place that I can go even if it's just as simple as drawing or sketching a little something in a notebook, I immediately feel so much better. And sure enough, as soon as I played the first song, I was like, wow, oh, I feel so much better. This is very nice and flowy, it's great. Nothing says Colorado like palm trees. <laughs> you do get a general feeling of what fabric is going to do. 
I remember when I first started designing, even before I went to design school, I would pick the wrong weight fabric or something like that. So those kinds of things you learn as you go. People can kind of teach you some of it, but you have to make a lot of mistakes to get to the point where you really start to understand what the fabric is going to do. And even still, I will start with a fabric that I'm familiar with and I'll get different results than I think I'm going to get. It can be sometimes frustrating, especially if you want to do something quickly and get it done, but other times the surprise can take you to another place that you hadn't expected and it can turn out to be so much better when you make those mistakes. So it's many years of learning sometimes the most mundane things and eventually it becomes something esoteric. A little bit extra color. And it's funny because it takes time to get it to that point, <laughs> doesn't it? And then she put like red lipstick, that was it. And I would just be like, Oh my God, my mother's so beautiful. She's someone you keep as a friend kind of forever. She's one of those really amazing, genuine people. I like to talk about her to my friends. She's definitely sparked um, inspiration in me. I think I get that same confidence from Mona in the sense that she's not afraid to experiment with style. To see just the variety and the amount of time and the, the technique and the details that Mona's put into her work, without having art grants or any kind of institutional support is pretty phenomenal. It's cut on the bias, which means it's cut on a 45 degree angle. So when somebody wears this, it will go around their curves. She's definitely someone who starts with next to nothing. She likes the blank canvas that you get as an artist. I feel like Mona is truly an alchemist. She can make something from nothing. I mean, I've watched her for years and how it's changed and if you've seen it for a while, you can see how it evolves, but today when you look at, at what she's doing, it looks evolved. I mean, it's, it's, it's like there, and when you go back and look, you can see kind of where she was and how it got here, and I, I, love, I love that. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. There's three famous dresses, they're red, white, and yellow. The main one that everyone was talking about was the 69 dress. I helped sew those, and it's funny because when we were um, putting those on, they were gonna be for a fashion show that spring that I was working with her, and they weren't quite done. They weren't quite fitted to the model, so we actually had to sew some of the models into the dresses before they were even finished to have them walk out. I also took a lot of photos with them in her then apartment, and 69 was really popular. A lot of people asked about it. So we recaptured it. It's interesting to think about broken wings. I think everybody has something in them that is probably broken and they're always trying to mend. It is something that the artists do that's inherent that we're trying to mend the things that have happened in our lives or or the in the world. It's something that you're not always aware of as an artist, but you're just doing that anyway. It's always making something more beautiful. If you know if it's truly your calling, you'll continue with it, you won't give up. Even during those times when you're frustrated, maybe the world doesn't want to hear your story or see what you're doing, or you're not making any money, you're struggling, maybe you can't eat for a day or two, whatever it might be, can't make your rent, Maybe your family or friends aren't respectful of what you're doing or they don't understand why you're doing it. All of those things. But if you're in the right spot, you'll continue to do it. And that's something to always remember. It's super important to remember where your heart is. And if creating something makes you happy, then stick with it. You know, the old-fashioned British documentaries, and they'd, they'd have the voiceover, and mm -hmm. they'd be like, and designer Mona Lucero and antique yes. dealer Aaron Johnson 
are commiserating over their latest creative endeavors. Yeah. Yeah. And, the, and the people are talking away for five minutes, and the, and the description of right. it is, they had a very good conversation. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. No more. No camera. No, no camera. <laughs>